What's going on guys? My name is Christopher and welcome to It's Complicated, the show where I talk about and showcase wristwatches. So if you love wristwatches like I do, you're going to want to hit that subscribe button, then click on the bell and you'll be all set. Today, we're going to be talking about three different Rolex date justs from three different decades. Here we go. All right, so today we're looking at three different reference number datejusts from three different decades. These watches have been provided to me by watchchest.com. If you like the watches in this video, check those guys out. I'll put a link in the description below. First up is the 16013. Now this is a real classic. I saw a video where someone said this was their grail watch as they unboxed it. Now before I get carried away here, I just wanna say that all of these watches are 36 millimeter two-tone date justs. I just wanna make that clear. They're all 36 mil. Now this watch is from the 80s. It has an acrylic crystal. You can see it domed there. So you can polish scratches out of it pretty easily, but it's much, much easier to scratch than a newer sapphire crystal. This date just has the classic Rolex Buckley dial with painted Roman numerals. The watch hands are black, which I think gives it a lot of character. I love that the hands match the Roman numerals there. Now the bracelet definitely has some stretch to it, but given the age, a little less stretch than average, I would say. This date just does have a traditional Rolex clasp. Now, this watch is using a Rolex caliber 3035 movement. The movement was introduced in 1977, has 27 joules, a 42 hour power reserve, beating at 28,000 beats per hour. It hacks, it has quick set, and of course it's automatic. But what's interesting about this movement versus the movement that's in the next two watches I'm gonna show you, when you set the time, turning the crown clockwise actually turns the time backwards. So to set the time, you turn the crown counterclockwise. Now the gold on this Rolex is 18 karat, although earlier 16013s saw 14 karat gold. If you've inherited one or something, you can actually check in the class there and it'll tell you if it's 18 or 14. Now being the gold is 18 karat, it does make you wonder why Rolex decided to make the change from 14 karat to 18 karat, especially given that 14 karat gold is a stronger metal than 18 karat gold. Maybe it's the richness of the color. If you've ever seen 14 karat gold compared to 18 karat side by side, the 14 karat almost looks fake. So maybe that's the reason. I guess only Rolex knows for sure. Now the Jubilee bracelet on this watch has hollow center links. You can actually see it there. Case is a holes case. See the holes there on the side of the case to connect the bracelet. This is just a beautiful watch. And although Roman numerals aren't my favorite, I do love the Buckley dial on this Rolex Datejust. Now let's fast forward to the next decade, the 90s. This is a Rolex Datejust reference number 16233. Now let's talk about some of the changes made to this from the 16013. For starters, the crystal is sapphire, extremely scratch resistant. The only thing that can scratch sapphire is diamond, so you're not really gonna scratch the crystal on this puppy. This watch has a Rolex caliber 3135 movement, which was an update to the 3035. It has the same beats per hour, but it does have 31 joules instead of 27, and a 50 hour power reserve instead of a 42 hour power reserve. But the 3035 and the 3135 are very similar movements. Now this watch has a no holes case, which is a nice update from the 16013, but some of the 16233 still did have the holes case. So the earlier 16233s are gonna have the holes case. This also has the same traditional clasp that the 16013 had, same hollow center links that the 16013 had, and of course the same hollow end links there. And I do love the black dial on the date just, just classic look there, just an excellent looking watch. Another thing I'll mention about this watch is the loom. It does have loom pips here and so did the 16013, but the 16013 was using tritium where I believe this one is using Super Luminova given this is from 1998. Another thing to mention about the loom on these older date just, don't expect the loom to hold a eight hour charge. You know, if you go into a movie theater, you're probably gonna have to use your phone to see the time. And really the same kind of weight to both of these watches 
And like I said, this does just have those little upgrades. The movement is upgraded, the no holes case, etc. Now this watch does have a little stretch as well, but not as much as the older one. And really for a 1998, that's not bad stretch at all for a 20 year old watch. Fast forward two decades in the 2010s and let's talk about all the improvements made to this. This is the Rolex Datejust reference number 116233. Now this sees many great improvements over the 16233. For starters, check out the engraving on the inner bezel or the rehot, however you want to say that. Very nice. Just really nice polish from Rolex there. Check out the lugs. The lugs are much thicker on the 116233. I feel the thicker lugs just gives this watch a lot more presence. This watch has solid end links here. That's going to prevent stretching. And speaking of stretching, check that out. This watch is in fantastic condition. Now, this watch does have the sapphire crystal, but it also has a laser etched crown at six o'clock. You're not going to be able to see that on video. I'll put a little picture up in the top right there for you of what that looks like. And what's cool about that laser etched crown is it's actually inside the sapphire. It's not on the inside or on the outside. It's in the middle of that sapphire crystal. And that is really, really cool. Before I talk about more improvements on this watch over the 16233, check out that mother of pearl dial. That is absolutely beautiful. And from what I've been told, that's so thick, they had to raise the stem for those hands because the cut of that mother of pearl is so thick. And of course, those diamonds are absolutely flawless as well. I just love the look of this watch. Now, another big improvement, solid center links. So the center links are solid 18 karat gold, as you can see there. And that really, really makes this watch weigh so much more than the 16233. And the bezel, you see the side of the bezel here? It actually has polished sides where the bezel on the 16233 and the 16013 have a brushed side. So a little improvement there. Still a no holes case, but check out the clasp on this one. Wow, that is so beautiful. It's a nice hidden clasp. This pops out. Boom, solid steel. And boy, do I think the improvement of that clasp is a major improvement over the traditional clasp. Now, that being said, be advised that this is not the most recent Rolex reference number. The most recent one is the 216233, and they changed the clasp to the Oyster clasp. I prefer this one, and I think that definitely gives the 116233 some extra collectability. The case of the 116233 seems to be a little thicker. I think they're actually the same size, but just looks like a little more steel here compared to the 16233. It is a real toss up of which one of these I prefer over the other ones, but I think the hat has to go off to the 116233, this guy here. I love the solid gold center links and that mother of pearl dial is amazing. This watch just feels like it's a little more sturdy and it's gonna last a little bit longer than these other ones. Although that being said, if you took care of these two watches, they would last you a lifetime as well. And there you have it, three different Rolex Datejusts from three different decades. Like I mentioned, I think the 116233 is my favorite of the bunch, but of course that is the newer one, so it does have all the modern bells and whistles. And that wraps up another episode of It's Complicated. Don't forget to subscribe to the show, like this video, share it with all your friends, and I'll see you next time on another episode of It's Complicated.